Hello and welcome to another video. Today I want to talk about the things that I did specifically to become a millionaire in seven years. So the list of items that I have are basically in just random order. They came out of my, they came out of my head and there is no specific weight to them. These things may or may not work for other people. It's just what worked for me. So, you know, sharing these things may help somebody else. Um, so the very first thing that I did, I started doing in 2010, and that was saving 70 to 75% of my take-home pay. This is crucial because it takes money to make money, correct? So that is crucial. You need to save. And I realize that for some people, saving 70 to 75% of your income is not possible. So with that, I would say save as much as you possibly can. It doesn't matter whether you make a million dollars. If you're spending a million dollars, you will have no money left over. You'll be living paycheck to paycheck. And trust me, I've been there for 15 years. I live paycheck to paycheck. From 20 years old to 35 years old, I live paycheck to paycheck. I was in debt. I had car loans. I had school loans. Yes, I've been there. Number two, uh, invest that money that you save somehow. Stock market, real estate, whether it's rentals, notes, you have to invest because putting that money inside of a bank account where you're earning 0.1%, 0.2%, it's as good as useless. You might as well just flush it down the toilet. It is useless at that point. Inflation is 2%, at least that's what they tell you it is. If you're not making at least 2% on your money, then you are losing money. So put your money into a money market fund at minimum. You can get one at Capital One. There's, there's a ton of them out there. I do Capital One uh, money market account. It pays 2% currently. I put money in there. I put emergency funds in there and you know, I draw from that if I needed an emergency, if there was an emergency or anything like that. But I can also deploy this money during a uh, stock market collapse or something like that as well. So put your money inside of a money market while you're waiting to figure out where you want to invest it. Do get it outside of the bank where you're getting 0.1, 0.2%. You are wasting money. Treat every single dollar that you have saved and invested as an employee of yours. They're going to go out, every single dollar is going to go out there and give you a return. And every return that you get, compound that, reinvest it. You have to do that. Reinvest it. Do not spend it. Reinvest it. Keep doing it over and over and over and over time, you will become wealthy. The third thing that I did was, is I adopted a minimalistic lifestyle, a frugal lifestyle. What does that mean exactly? It means that I cut cable out five, six years ago. Why do I need cable? I cut down, I had a couple of storage units. I consolidated those. Not only did I consolidate two down to one, I consolidated that one down to half the size. I got rid of stuff. Over the years, you accumulate so much stuff. It's like, I have a ton of stuff here I haven't even never used. I started going down to a minimalist stuff. I don't buy hardly anything anymore unless I absolutely need it. This does not mean you have to be cheap. Even though somebody would call me cheap, it's kind of an inside joke. I am not cheap. I spend a ton of money and I spend good money on things that I really need or want, but I have to make sure they are things that I absolutely need. So one thing that I do not compromise on is on my food. Um, I shop at Whole Foods. I spend a lot of money on quality food, you know, so 500, 600 bucks a month on food. That's just not something I'm willing to be frugal on, you know, so I have a gym membership as well, whether I go or not. I mean, I try to, um, but th those just, those things right there are just going to save you in the long run, you know, from in and out of the hospital when you're 78 years old. That's just, that's my personal feeling on it. So yes, I, I spend money on quality food. So that's just one of my things, you know, and you know, we can't just live life and not spend money on things that we want. Right. But at some point, you know, when you're living paycheck to paycheck, your wants are always going to outweigh your, you know, able to afford those things. Right. Look, for example, all these latest iPhones and galaxy phones, 
you know, do you really need that stuff, right? You don't need that stuff. Look at a BMW, for example, you know, and I have a passion for sports cars. I've had quite a few sports cars in my day. I've had a Corvette, I've had a Porsche, I've had several Mustangs that I've souped up over the years. But with that said, that BMW, that's $80,000. That's $80,000 you can invest in something else and get a return on that. You will not become wealthy if you go out and buy a car every couple of years, every five years, brand new. I have never owned a brand new car. The car I own right now is a 2005 Pathfinder. I've had it since 2009. It's got 90,000 miles on it, mainly because I work six months out of the year, not here. So, so that BMW that you want, that's $80,000. When you get that $80,000 saved up, you will not want that car anymore. Trust me on this. For some reason, when you need to buy something that you want that costs a lot, that required so much work for you to save up to, you will not want it. That's true for a lot of things. So it really depends on how you accumulate your wealth as well, right? If you worked really hard to save up, you know, accumulated a million dollars like I did over a seven year period. It took a lot of work. It took a lot of sacrifice for that. I gave up a lot of things. I worked really hard. I went to school at night for seven years, literally. You're not going to want a lot of these things. You're going to spend most of your money on experiences. I spent a month in Australia, right? So you're just not going to want a lot of those things anymore. It, it really depends on how you accumulate your wealth as well. You know, for somebody that, you know, wins the lottery or something like that, you know, they didn't work hard for that money. So, you know, that's probably why they go broke after two years, right? So, and that kind of leads on to the fourth thing is delaying gratification. That kind of touched on that already, right? I mean, I love sports cars and I've been driving a path, I've been driving a Pathfinder since 2009. So, and I missed having a stick shift car. I mean, by the time I'm going to buy a stick shift car, there may not even be stick shift cars around. We're probably going to be sitting in cars that drive themselves. But delaying gratification is super important. And the very last thing that I did, and this is, this is a huge one, you got to invest in yourself. You know, it's like personal development. For me, certifications for my career field, I have probably a dozen certifications in my career field. Um, education, I spent seven years of going to school. I had school loans. That's, you know, if that can benefit you, if you can get a higher paying job, if that can benefit your particular career field, do that. I mean, obviously you don't want to take out super expensive loans. Um, you know, learn the stock market learn options. I'm self-taught in the stock market. I'm self-taught in options. I've traded um, stocks for literally 10 years. You know, I wouldn't say professionally. I'm not a professional trader at all, but I've done pretty good. I've had some large losses over the years. I'm going to do some videos on that, but uh, I've had, you know, overall I've gained money in the stock market. Um, read books. You know, the very first book that changed my mindset about how I think about money was Rich Dad Poor Dad in 2001. That book was huge. That just totally changed my mindset because I had grown up, you know, I was born in 75, right? My parents did not teach me about money. They didn't teach me about how to invest. They didn't teach me about, you know, compound interest. They didn't teach me about anything really about money. They taught me the old method, which is go to work, go, you know, work a W-2 job, earned income, which is taxed the highest out of any other type of income, really. They didn't teach me. And that's, unfortunately, that is the way things are. Like nobody gets taught this stuff. So, you know, I'm glad that books are available. I'm glad that YouTube is available. By all means, do searches on YouTube and you're going to learn a lot about this type of stuff. So those are the five things that I did that helped me become um, super successful, a millionaire in seven years from 2010 to 2017. I've had quite a few, you know, stock gains in that amount of time. It was a good bull market. Um, nobody would have expected that. And I certainly didn't. I'm not 100% invested in the stock market now. I have about 50%. Um, 
of the money that is in the stocks, I have about 50% of that invested into stocks. Uh, most of my other investments, which I'm going to talk about, I've done some other videos on that. I'll link those up in the top here. Um, you can check those out and I will be doing a ton more videos on this stuff. I got caught by the FIRE community, which is financial independence, retire early community. And that's my goal to retire in a couple of years. For some people that could probably retire now and what I've accumulated, but you know, I enjoy my career. I've worked hard to get where I'm at. Um, I'm not quite ready to give it up yet. So anyways, if you enjoyed this video, if you got any satisfaction out of this video, if this video, if this video helped you, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, go ahead and subscribe. I got a ton more videos coming out and we'll see you in the next one.